a city where all citizens have access to affordable, dignified, equitable basic services and where everyone has a right to the city. A city where the duty bearers and right holders ensure that the rights of all citizens are promoted, fulfilled and enjoyed by all. A city where no one is left behind. This is the just city, the dream for every urban dweller and worker. For me, the just city is a city that is run by and for the many and not the few. It's a city that is catering for the needs of all its citizens and not just those of the privileged ones. The meaning of a just city is really a city that allows residents to fulfill their aspirations and enjoying all the aspects of the city. It should be equitable, but also dignified so that um, common Mwananchi doesn't feel like there are layers of service delivery. What a just city means to me is uh, it's a city that is inclusive of everyone, irrespective of their background, irrespective of their, you know, their physique, maybe disabled, you know, PWD and something of the sort. Eh? As a just city where everyone has an equal opportunity to access the city. It is actually very important to have a just city or to have more just cities in Kenya because by 2050, half of Kenya's population will be urban and therefore we need to find solutions to cater for their needs. I think the society has been desegregated into the haves and the have-nots and the cities are the biggest manifestations of the haves and the have-nots. So just city then tries to bridge this gap between the haves and the have-nots so that the majority, often 50 to 60 percent, of the population that is residing in informal settlements, for instance, are able to feel that they're part and parcel of the city fabric. The reality, however, is that the Africa's population is set to double by 2040, and without equivalent improvement and investment in infrastructure, service delivery, and the quality of life for the urban population, then the just city realization might just be a dream. It's clear that urbanization in Africa is linked uh, to hopes, and they're the hopes of many. The key challenge uh, is basically that people are currently moving into cities that are unjust. So the majority of city dwellers, they live in informal settlements, and they, they try to make their living in the informal economy. They live and work in precarious conditions, without the work contract, without access to social security, and basically in the absence of public goods. In the future, as I've said, more than a billion people are expected to live in cities here in Africa. Uh, but it's unclear who is going to build the infrastructure that is needed in order to cater for their needs. I Pengine kama hakuna maji, tunanunua mbali, maji 10 bob, ama 20. KPLC ilika mingina ya mambo na tokens, sayi ya ziyuko. So ina manisha ya waseku access schema, ni ngumu sana. Kwanza ukienda huku chini unapata, manyumba hizo mawiring. Pia ni vineza umiza mse, na hiyo inafanyika juu, imebidi juu, wezi kaa kwa nyumba, na light ya candle juni costly kulingana na ile ya steam na maisha imepanda kama mimi na uzanga hapa chapati githeri na mandondo mafuta imeshoot unga imeshoot makaa imepanda sasa hii tukiona 500 ukiamka nayo na mpaka ifike saa 7 unaweza kosa hata lunch kukula Hospitali ziko, but ziko, iko tu ile moja moja. Kama una pesa ya kutafuta ambulance, wakupeleke, utakufia kwa laini. Nyumba huku kibra, unapata e-time sign, e-time ya short rains, alizao sipoa. Unapata mbue kinyesha. Maramingi inezenda na wase, inezenda na vitu za watu, kama huku chini. Yani... Drainage system bado na manyumba ziko poa kuka. Against this background, the FES Kenya office has partnered with Civil Society Urban Development Platform that has been facilitating the Just City Working Group with the objective to jointly think and work towards cities that are for all the inhabitants. So FES, not only in Kenya, but especially here in Kenya, has established numerous partnerships with various organizations. 
here in Kenya mainly through the two working groups, the Just City Working Group and the Socially Just Public Transport Working Group. Our footprint is very visible in, in, as a Just City Working Group because the first entry point that uh, we made as a Just City Working Group was to domesticate uh, the Just City agenda in Kenya so that we're able to understand what are those principles that are guiding us. Uh, and therefore we're rallying behind four uh, key principles. One is about dignity. Then we have uh, a, a, another principle about equity and diversity, which we find very, very important, that uh, urban diversity uh, must always be accompanied by a sense of equity. We have rights and responsibilities, and this is uh, pretty much aligned to our constitution, where there's a bundle of rights provided um, under uh, Article 43 of our constitution. But then it also bequeaths responsibilities on, on the citizenry. Uh, and then lastly, uh, we have a principle about democracy. There has to be a way in which dialogue is given room and people are able to, to measure themselves. So that was the first main entry point. So we, we, we in, in, in consistent with the transformative change-making process, we're able to then have an alternative vision. And that vision is embedded within these four principles of the just city. The conceptualization of a just city is based on a core belief of human dignity, based on African values as the starting point for living in the city. Yeah, if you look at the just city uh, 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 and how it is conceived uh, globally, the just city focused on, uh, on, on, on a couple of issues. Uh, uh, yes, um, the issue of rights was always at the center of, um, of the just city. The issue of governance, uh, we are, which we are calling democracy, was always at, uh, at, uh, at, uh, at the center of, um, of the city. The issue of equity was always at the, at the center of the, of the just city in terms of, uh, of, of uh, inclusion. What we came here and, and started looking at was that, okay, fine, what, how would the just city look like in the Kenyan context? And, 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 and our, our starting point, has, our discourse has always been to, uh, to anchor this in the Kenyan constitution and then to make reference to, uh, to um, the UN declarations and, uh, and, and, and legal frameworks that are also part and parcel uh, of the Kenyan constitution. Due to the growing urbanization, many concepts have come up to address the urbanization challenge. And one of the concepts that has recently emerged is the smart city approach, which relies largely on the technology to manage urban areas, but also to provide public goods efficiently and also ensure that service delivery is secured efficiently. The smart city approach in itself is a good idea that uh, is promoting lots of uh, efficiency, uh, it provides security, it also makes sure that uh, the urban management and public service delivery is monitored. But there's also the flip side where there are limitations of this smart city approach. For one, it is not citizen-centered. This means that the citizens are perceived as subjects where service providers look at them and give some sort of control over them. Secondly, there is the exclusion of the invisibles, that is the people who are staying in the informal settlements, the persons living with disabilities, and other special needs groups such as uh, the elderly, the children, and of course the youth. The Just City concept highlights key aspects in the following areas. Urban landscape, social and affordable housing, transport, social planning, democratic governance, urban institution, safety in public spaces, the invisibles, as well as the role of the media in highlighting these key areas of the Just City concept. The duty bearers must be alive to the reality that the cities that we live in are diverse and therefore my, must also make a deliberate measure to take care of the needs of the urban vulnerables and by this I mean those who are more often referred to uh, the invisible in the city because of um, 
the way the cities are designed. For example, the hectic traffic in the cities may just push away children from the city. Uh, the sick people, the elderly, and persons with disability. So it's important that public spaces are designed uh, by embracing the principles of universal design to ensure that the spaces are equitable, the spaces are accessible, and there is adequate public participation. No, normally there is this notion that has been happening for a very long time that um, uh, people who are vulnerable are seen as uh, helpless, or so, so there are other people to speak for them. So, they are more often left out in conversations that are critical to their lives. When you talk about just housing, we're talking about housing that ensures uh, dignity of persons. So somebody who's physically challenged should be able to access those houses. Uh, children and women, even pregnant women, should be able to access those spaces. We're also talking about equity and diversity. It should be able to cater for all people of all ages and uh, of all um, backgrounds. Uh, it should also be, uh, people should also have their rights in those housing, right, to, you know, uh, adequate sanitation and adequate, uh, you know, facilities around them. And then it should, it should also be democratic in the sense that people who are in those houses uh, have chosen to be in those houses, they've not been forced into them. So when we talk about just housing, those things that are important and there are gaps in achieving them, especially in our context here in Kenya, we find that there is, uh, first of all, accessibility into, into uh, these homes. For instance, uh, many Kenyans are not even able to access their homes uh, in terms of affordability. The prices are high and even availability of those houses is uh, quite low. So we have a gap in that sense. The other thing that is a big, big gap is the security of tenure. In Kenya, we know land is a big issue and a lot of people are not even able to afford the land that they would use to build these areas. So security of tenure is a big, big issue and it's something that needs to be addressed and, and I think the government uh, needs to look at it uh, as a way of ensuring that just uh, housing is, um, is, is catered for. We need to move fast and start protecting the renter because the renter is the major, that group represents the majority of the Kenyan people. We need to ensure there's good quality rental stock. We need to ensure that these um, are done in environments that are sanitary, that are proper. We need to ensure that uh, we have security of tenure even for, in for renting. Uh, so that just like uh, though the middle class who rent, you can't just kick them out, or people who rent offices and so on, you can't just kick them out. We want to see that trickle down so that even the poor guy who's paying uh, 3,000 shillings or 1,000 shillings still lives in a, in, in a decent rental rental accommodation. Government social housing, government has created this uh, policy that the, they're calling social housing, which is basically to own, well, I mean, large rent and rent to own. We're saying that social housing should actually be rental and should spread out to different uh, varieties of rental, not just rent to own as one mechanism, because rent to own requires that you have got regular income, that you have a pay slip, that that you know you can actually be able to pay every month and a lot of people again within that informal sector do not have that so we're saying this needs to be opened out so that we, can, we have more players in that field we have circles we have what we call uh, social uh, landlords if churches want to build houses for poor people and charge low rents why not the just city principles anchored and directly expressed in the global national and local instruments give the confidence that the just cities can be achieved in kenya and Africa. The scope uh, for just cities and how we can infuse it into the Africanization of the Africa urbanization agenda, the new urban agenda, uh, SDGs and so on, is continuing to advance our four principles that the just city stands for. We must make sure that urbanization happens and happens by dignifying its populace or the citizen. We must make sure that there is equity and diversity within these uh, urban areas. And if we are using diversity positively, it obviously says and will tell us that there's no homogeneity in any city. We have different ethnic uh, 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 orientations, we have different cultures that people come with, but certainly the city is a converging space. So how do we create an environment where this diversity is positive and not negative?
In order to achieve the just city in Kenya and Africa at large, we have to make political decision makers more visionary. We have to make them brave enough to actually make changes for their citizens. Planning must be inclusive and must carry the aspirations of the larger population of the urban areas. Number two, resources must be equally distributed so that the services that are missing in these uh, vulnerable areas are actually achieved in a way that provides quality to the neighborhoods where these vulnerable groups live. And three, is about allowing people to express themselves and find uh, their, and exercise their freedoms within the city in a manner that is complementary to the city development strategy.